Good evening. We'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday night Facebook service for the shut-in, those that are having to work and uh, not able to attend our service at 7 o'clock tonight. Welcome. Anybody else that's viewing, welcome. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, we're coming to you from the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. This is a pre-recorded uh, service that we put on a little before 6 o'clock or around 6 o'clock on Wednesday nights. But whenever you're viewing, like I said, glad to have you with us. We're at the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield. We're located at 1233 Collins Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. If you don't have a church to attend or looking for one, we'd love to invite you to come and be with us in any and all of our services. We start at 10 on Sunday mornings with Sunday school preaching at 11. We have our Sunday night services at 6 p.m. and Wednesday nights or 7 p.m. We also have an FM transmitter that if you're not feeling well, maybe if the idols don't know if I need to go in around anybody, you can come to the parking lot and sit in your vehicle and listen from the parking lot here at the church. Tune your radio to 92.9 FM and hear everything that's going on inside. And from what I'm told, it's clear. And if it's not, I need to be told by somebody in the parking lot. But from what I'm told, it's, it's uh, clear out there. They can hear everything that's going on inside. And we're praying that they'll be better, those that have to use that. We're so glad to have them at the church and at least come and be with us in that if they're physically able to do that. We're praying for their healing that they would get better to where they can come on in and be with us. So good to be here tonight. Now, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We try to do this a little bit like we do our Wednesday night service. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, then we'll have a congregational song. I want you to sing along with us here in just a few minutes. Well, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the privilege you've given us to be able to have this video, and I hope it's a help to somebody that's viewing. Lord, if we can just be a help, help us to remember. If we can just be a help and encouragement to one person, what a blessing that is. But I pray many will listen, view, and uh, I pray that God it'll be a help to everybody that does it. And I pray that many people will, not for my glory, but God for yours, that they might hear the word of God and be encouraged, or if they're lost, that they'd get saved. Lord, I pray that you'd just help us tonight. I pray for our missionaries, God, that you'd bless them, with the Brent Rochester and his family, just comfort and help them, Lord, and all the missionaries the church supports. I pray, God, tonight that you'd bless our service at seven, everywhere the word of God's preached. Thank you for being so good to us. Help us to be a blessing. I'm looking forward to heaven. I thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for the promise. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen, amen. All right, we're going to look in that good old red back hymnal, church hymnal, and we're going to turn to page 165. If you've got one, you can turn with us. This one's called Kneel at the Cross. Kneel at the Cross. Usually used as an invitation song, but we're going to sing it this evening and uh, as a congregational number. Don't you think about what it says. Boy, I'm glad for the cross of Calvary, thank God. Kneel at the cross. Christ will meet you there. Come while he waits for you. This to his force. Be with him your care. And begin life anew. Yes, he will. 
still thank God. If we'll kneel, he will. Amen. He'll help us there. He'll meet us there. I'm glad for that Sunday morning. I called on him and asked him to forgive me of my sins and to save me. And what a, what a wonderful day that was. Well, <clears throat> be taking that good old authorized King James Bible. And we'll pick back up in the book of Luke chapter number three this evening. Luke chapter number three. And uh, while you're turning, we're going to do another song. If I can get my voice to cooperate, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, we were asked to do this one a while back at church and I hadn't done it in a while and I couldn't remember all the words and the verses. So I'm going to try it. I was working on it a little bit, been working on it. Kind of got embarrassed. I should have known this song. Sung it many, many times, but I hadn't done it in a while. And that's the way it is with me now. I, if I don't do them ever so often, I'll forget them. But uh, this is called Where the Roses Never Fade. <clears throat> and Brother Junior Emman asked us to do that on a Sunday morning recently. And uh, we were not able to do all the verses because I couldn't remember them. But I hope this will be a blessing to all of you that's viewing today. And right after this song, we'll look into the Word of God in Luke chapter number three. And this is called Where the Roses Never Fade. I am going to a city where the streets with gold are laid, where the tree life is song. Hope that was a blessing to you this evening. As I said, be taking that good old authorized King James Bible and turn with us to the book of Luke chapter number three. We'll lay, lay this old guitar down and uh, we'll look at the word of God. And I'm so glad to be able to do that. Thank God I've got the word of God to go by and I appreciate it. Let me say this before we get into the word of God. I thank God for all the preachers that I've ever had the privilege to listen to that's preached the word of God, preached truth to me. I can think of several. I'm talking about really before I got saved. I thank God for the one since I've got saved. But before I got saved, I thank God for preachers that preached the truth and let me know that I was lost, that all had sinned and come short of the glory of God. That included me. That did not leave me out. When the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When I first realized, I don't remember what age I was, but when I first realized that 
I was not going to go to heaven unless I called on the Lord and asked Jesus to save me. Man, I never got away from that, and I thank God. Boy, I tell you, it, it didn't make me feel good. You know, some people say, well, preacher, I want to go to church. I want to leave feeling good. We can if we're obedient to God. We can leave church feeling good if we've been obedient to God, not grieved his spirit or going against what he wants. But, uh, man, I tell you, I, I never got away from it. Songs that we sung a while ago, Kneel at the Cross, I used to wouldn't like that song because uh, God would have used it to dealt with my heart as a lost sinner, but I like it now. Matter of fact, I'll pick it out. Uh, and, and songs like Amazing Grace, songs like Just As I Am, boy, I love those songs. They were singing Just As I Am that Sunday morning I got saved back when I was 19 years old. I thank God for the power the power of the word of God. Good gracious, it'll work on folks' hearts. It'll work on my heart. And I pray it'll help us this evening. We're going to be in Luke chapter number three, but let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege to pray. Thank you for helping us tonight. Lord, I pray you'd use the rest of this service to be a help. Thank you for the precious word of God. Thank you for this book of Luke that we're looking at on Wednesday nights. And I pray you'd be a help. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We just finished up Luke chapter number one and Luke chapter number two. And now we're going to start chapter number three. And uh, this chapter starts off dealing with the ministry of John the Baptist. Most of you heard about John the Baptist. I was in a servant re service recently. <coughs> Excuse me. And I heard a preacher say that Jesus was a Baptist. And I, I kind of grinned when he said that. And I thought I'm going to listen I'm going to listen as he goes through this and see what he says. And he said, I can prove to you that Jesus was a Baptist. And I thought to myself, all right, let's hear it. He said, well, he was baptized by John the Baptist, wasn't he? And he was baptized, so yes, he was a Baptist. But anyway, thank God for our Savior. But the ministry of John the Baptist, why was he called the Baptist? Because he baptized. He submersed or immersed, you might say, people under the water. We that are Bible believers and what the Word of God has to say, we believe in immersion or putting them under the water, all the way under the water. That's the way they baptized. And we baptize in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. We'll get in later on about where John the Baptist baptized Jesus, but I'm talking about the reason they called him John the Baptist. Jesus called him. John the Baptist. Amen. He sure did. Now, in verse number one, the Bible says, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Ituria, and of the region of Trachonitis and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest, I tell you, we got a lot of history right there. All these people were in office, and we have the names of Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest. This could be narrowed down to a specific time in history. My Bible says about A.D. 26, about A.D. 26. The Bible says, verse 2, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest, along that time the word of God came unto John. The word of God came unto John. You say, preacher, there were a lot of people named John. Yes, but it narrows it down. The word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. We looked at that in chapter number one about how that John's mother and father, Zacharias and Elizabeth, were godly people. They had him in an older age, and uh, God blessed them with this only son when they were up in age, a great age. And uh, now John the Baptist is grown, and the Bible says the word of God came unto him, unto John the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. Now, if the word of God comes to you, we ought to be thankful for that. We also need to share it. We need to share it. I tell you something, let me just say this real quick like, and we'll move on. I tell you something else we need to do. We need to let the Holy Ghost of God lead us to where we need to share it and what we need to do. And I'm glad, thank God, I'm glad he will. And we need, everybody 
needs to hear the word of God. But I'm talking about you and I that are saved by the grace of God. We should be spirit-led, spirit-filled, but spirit-led and try to, listen, we can't do everything. I can't do everything. You can't do everything. I tell you what we can do. We can do what God allows us to do and as the Holy Ghost leads us to do. But the word of God came to John the Baptist and the Bible says, and he came into all the country about Jordan, came to him in the wilderness, but he came into all the country about Jordan, verse 3 says, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. That's why they call him John the Baptist. He preached the baptism of repentance. Amen. Repentance. What's that mean? That means being sorry for what you've done, but not only being sorry for what you've done, repenting of it and turning from it, but, but turning to the Lord, thank God. The baptism of repentance is what it says. For the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of sins. John came preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, the Bible says. And then we have in verse 4, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, speaking of John, ahead of time, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. What was John's ministry? He was the forerunner of Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. He was to prepare people for the coming of the Lord on the scene to preach the word, but John was to get folk ready for him. Now, I'm not John the Baptist, and you're not John the Baptist. None of us are. But here's what we ought to think about. We ought to try to prepare people for the coming of the Lord. Now, John was preparing him as far as Christ's ministry here on earth, but we that are saved, we know that he died for sin, was buried, and rose again. We also know he's coming back one day. We need to try to help people get prepared for the coming of the Lord. The Bible says John did that, as it is written, verse 4, in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Make it straight. Make it plain. I, I'm telling you, folks, folks don't like it when you, a lot of folks, let me just put it that way, a lot of folks don't like it when you make it plain, when you preach it plain, preach it straight. But you know why we do that? We do that because we love people. We're trying to help people. We want to be an encouragement to people. I want to encourage you today. I want folk to encourage me to keep on keeping on, amen, to, to keep in the old paths. Thank God, where's the good way? And walk therein. So he prepared the way. Verse five, every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough way shall be made smooth. <laughs> Boy, I like that. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain shall be brought low. Man, he knows who needs to be lifted up, who needs to be brought down, thank God. The crooked shall be made straight. I'm glad the Lord can take something crooked and make something straight out of it, amen. And the rough way shall be made smooth. Listen, the rough ways shall be made smooth. There's coming a day when no heartache shall come, amen. No more clouds in the sky, no more tears in the eye, amen. I love that song, what a day that will be, amen. One of these days, praise God, the rough way shall be made smooth. Verse six said, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And Christ was coming on the scene at this time. And they would see him. But one day, everyone will see him. I've not seen him with these eyes, but one day I'll see him with these eyes. But they'll be different eyes, won't they? They won't be these eyes like they are now. They'll be glorified eyes. One day I'll lay, on, lay eyes on him. I can see him with a spiritual eye now, but one day I'll see him in that glorified body that God will give me. One day I'll see him, thank God. I'm looking forward to that. Praise the Lord. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Verse seven, then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him. Here's what John said. Now here was John's message. Boy, listen to this right here. Verse seven. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, bless your heart. You just keep doing like you're doing. Just keep trying to press on and do good and everything will be all right. No, that's not what John the Baptist preached. John the Baptist wasn't like a lot of these televangelists. I mean, you know, prosperity 
preaching, motivational speaking. He wasn't like that. A lot of folk, listen, they wouldn't have liked him. You know what he said? The Bible says, he said to the multitude that came to be baptized of him, they came to be baptized. They came to be baptized by John. And John said, oh, generation of vipers. Generation of vipers. A viper is not just a snake. A viper is a poisonous snake. A snake that none of us want anything to, we don't want anything to do with them, do we? O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He's telling them I need to get right with God because they ain't right with God. And they need to flee from the wrath to come. What is the wrath to come? Hell. A literal place called hell. A literal place called the lake of fire. Listen, that's, that's what's going to come during that tribulation period that's coming on the earth, the seven years of tribulation when the saints of God are called out and the tribulation starts and literally, literally, I believe we could say hell will be unleashed on this earth. Listen, flee from the wrath to come. Flee from it. Who hath warned you to flee from it? God had warned them. He said also in verse 8, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. In other words, you need, to, you need to start doing right. Repent means to change from one way of thinking and look at, look at it another way. Get right with God. He said, bring forth therefore fruits, verse 8, worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. He says, bring forth fruits, meat for repentance or fitting for repentance. In other words, if we really repented, it's going to show up. It's going to show up. Thank God I'm glad. Listen, if, if we mean business, if somebody comes to us and they say, I have repented, I have asked God to save me, I have asked God to forgive me of my sins, you know what's going to happen? It's going to show up in their life. Amen. It's going to show up in their life. I guarantee you that. Well, he said, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance to prove your repentance. And don't be bragging about we're children of Abraham because he said God's able to raise up of these stones or these rocks, children of Abraham. Verse 9, he says, and now also the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Well, that's not good for the tree, is it? If the axe is laid to the root of the trees, we need to know we're wrong. We don't like to think of ourselves as being wrong, but when we're wrong, we need to know we're wrong. Sometimes we need to say, Lord, help me. Somebody may say something and we, you know, we may not like it or may like it, but we still need to think about it. Well, is that right? Is that right? Of course, we, we know whether it is or not, don't we? We know that, but is that right? He said, now also the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. He's talking about them fruits, meat for repentance, proving your repentance. And the people ask him, saying, what shall we do then? What, what, what should we do? Our fruits, proving our repentance. He answered and saith unto them, he that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath one. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then came also publicans, which were tax collectors, tax collectors, excuse me. Then came also publicans to be baptized and said to him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, exact no more than that which is appointed to you. In other words, don't take those extra taxes like you've been doing and robbing people. Then the soldiers likewise demanded of him saying, and what shall we do? And he said unto them, do violence to no man. Do violence to no man. Boy, I like that. He also said this, Neither accuse any falsely and be content with your wages. In other words, do right. If you really, if you say you're right, do right. Bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. It will show up in your life if you've been saved. I'm going to close with this. We're going to stop right there. Oh, Lord, Lord willing, we'll pick up with verse number 15 next Wednesday night. Well, listen. If you and I that are saved by the grace of God, if, if we're truly saved, there's going to be a difference in our life. There has to be a difference in our lives. And by the way, it's going to be evident. It's going to be evident. 
We're going to bring forth good fruit instead of bad fruit or no fruit. We're going to bring forth good fruit. God can help us, thank God. I hope this has helped you today. John the Baptist was what we would probably call today a rough preacher. But you know what? They needed to hear it. They needed to hear it. Sometimes I say things, and I'm not saying everything I say is always right either. But sometimes I say things that's pretty strong, and sometimes folk get mad. Sometimes folk don't like it. But you know what? They know if I'm telling them right, they know it's truth. They know it's the truth. And if I'm preach something and it gets on me, I need to get it right. Amen. I need to get it right. God help us to do that. Hope this has been a help to you this evening. It's always a blessing to be able to be with you on these Wednesday evenings or whenever you view. Again, thank you. I hope it's a help to you. We don't need to just be hearers of the word. We need to be doers of the word. And until next week, we love you, the Lord. We're praying for you. And uh, let me just mention this real quickly before I close. I forgot to mention this. This coming Sunday, we'll start our revival services at Trinity. Brother Noah Fry will be with us at 11 o'clock. We'll have Sunday school at 10. But this coming Sunday, Brother Noah Fry will be with us, Lord willing, if he's able physically, preaching at the 11 o'clock service and the 6 o'clock service. Monday through Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m., Brother Darrell Cox will be preaching. And on Monday night, Harrison Ridge will be singing. And on Tuesday night, by grace, Bluegrass Gospel will be singing. On Wednesday night and Sunday night, we'll have singing from the church. And Brother Darrell Cox will be singing as well. But we're looking forward to that. I want to mention that. I forgot to mention You say, Preacher, when is it? Just, just go back towards the first of this video. And, uh, and it'll tell you how to get there. We'll give our address and everything. But thank you so much. And like I said, until next week, God bless you is my prayer.